Video lesson 4.2, side angle side criteria. So in class we've been discussing uh, drawing conclusions and how we can come up with information uh, based on other information given to us. So the same principle is going to apply here and we're going to utilize that, um, all those things that we did in order to actually prove triangles are congruent. So uh, look at the picture here, you know, we have two triangles. Right? If I'm told that they are equal, uh, then we can conclude some information, right? We've got, uh, as depicted in the pictures here, we've got angle A uh, and angle D are of equal measure. We've got angle B here uh, and angle E that are also of equal measures. And same thing with C and F, right? So those are depicted in the information that those are congruent angles to each other um, because they have equal measure. Right, but if the triangles themselves are equal, then we know that their sides are also equal. So uh, the corresponding pieces would be, in this case, AB uh, would match up with ED, and that would make them uh, congruent to each other. Again, the if you look at the angles, you know, the single and the double angle here uh, with the markings, that gives me AB. So the single and the double markings uh, show that ED, those would be corresponding to each other. So they, they would be equal. Uh, we also have uh, BC over here and that would correspond with EF over here again double triple double triple so that would make these congruent and lastly we have AC here uh, and that would be corresponding with DF making them congruent. So if we have if we know that we have congruent um, triangles then we have three pairs of congruent sides and three pairs of congruent angles. So we can utilize that and work backwards. If I can prove that I have some of these things, I can prove that I have uh, the triangles themselves are congruent. So one of those ways is specifically known as side angle side criteria. So let's think about this for a second. If I take uh, a line, if I draw a line segment of some, of some length, so let's say I got that one right there. Uh, if I was to create another um, line segment that is attached to this, right, like so, right, I would create an angle, right? This would become an angle, right? And that makes this angle right here, right? So, well, think about this. Now, if I have these two things, right, and if this angle is made up of one side of some length and another side of another length, and that, that creates this angle here. Now, what if I duplicated this, right? Literally make a copy of it, right? We are, we can say with confidence that the core, you know, those pieces are exactly the same size, right? So we can say without any questions that this and this are equal, this and this were equal, right? And the angles themselves here were equal, right? This and this. Right, because I made an exact copy of it, right? Exactly a copy of that thing, right? So we know that they're equal because I just I literally just copied it. So the question really becomes, can I make uh, two different size triangles if I have two sides that are already equal and an angle that's between them being equal? Is there any way for me to make one? So I'm gonna on this left side here, I'm gonna take uh, the end, first endpoint and connect it to the other endpoint, creating a triangle. So the question is on this second one, can I connect these in any other way to create two different size triangles? Right. So again, if I was to connect this, no matter how I do this, right, there's only one way that I can connect these two points, and that would create the exact same triangles. Right. And that comes out of the fact that I have here this side right, and this side being congruent, the bottom side here, these being congruent, and the fact that that angle between them is equal, that means that these uh, two red segments that I drew have to also be the same size. So now I know that these are equal. And that means that all three, that all three sides and the angles, that means that these triangles themselves are actually congruent. All right, so we utilize the fact that I know that this, these two sides and the angle between them, right, are equal, 
Same thing over here. These two sides and the angle between them. Now, it doesn't matter how I oriented this. I could have spun this around and did it in a different orientation, but it doesn't matter. The size of those segments and the, si and the size of the angle would still be the same, even if I spun it around and changed how, you know, its direction that it, it was facing. Still wouldn't matter. Across from that angle, these two red sides would still be congruent to each other. Which So therefore, if these triangles are equal, then we can conclude that all their parts are also equal, like these two and these two angles here, that they are congruent. So that side angle side is just a, a way for us to kind of go through and, um, and, and systematically prove that I have two triangles that are, uh, that are equal. Right? So let's do an actual proof here. So if you look at example one, Right? I'm going to utilize what we call a two-column proof or a formal proof, and that's the statement and reason uh, t, t chart that I have down here. Right? So I'm going to take this and I'm going to construct a proof, a systematic um, process here, to show that these two triangles are equal. So what am I being asked to, to show? I'm being asked to prove that this triangle is congruent to this triangle. Right. And that first one, the A, triangle ABC, is right here. Here's my yellow triangle. Right. And CDB is CDB triangle is right here. All right. So I'm trying to prove that these two things are, in fact, uh, congruent to each other. So how do I do this? Right. Well, I've got to uh, take the given information that I have here and apply it, apply it to this, to this specific diagram and the information uh, and see what other conclusions I can draw. What other inferences can I make based on what I've been told? Now we're gonna focus on this first method which we've discussed as side angle side. And we're gonna see if we can prove that these are congruent based on two sides being congruent, two pairs of sides being congruent and specifically the angle between them. And that's key. If I, if I have two sides, I got to get the angle that's between them to be congruent in order for it to be side angle side. So let's start off with uh, information that I've been told. So the first piece of information I'm told is that I've got parallel lines. So let's write that down because that's a given piece of information. So AB, line segment AB is parallel to line segment DB. And we're literally just going to write down our reason is given because we were told that. We were told that information. All right. So what does that do for us? What does that given piece of information tell me? Does it specifically tell me I have equal sides? No. Just being parallel doesn't tell me that. But what other things can I can I get out of it? So well, let's look at the picture here. So if I got AB, let's let's extend this a little bit just to kind of help visualize what's going on here. So if I've got these two lines, right? If those are parallel. Well, I see here that DB intersects both of them. So if DB intersects both of those, right, then what does that make DB? That would make DB a transversal, right? So now I have two parallel lines cut by a transversal. And if you think back to our previous units, we have the fact that we got a lot of angle pairs that come out of that. We've got alternate interior angles, we've got alternate exterior angles, we've got corresponding angles, we've got same side interior angles, uh, we even got vertical or supplementary. So we got a lot of different things that we can now um, try and look for because I have parallel lines. So in this case we're looking for the parallel lines, and we're looking for the angles that are inside the triangle. So I'm, I'm noticing here that uh, these parallel lines and this transversal, they intersect and they to, they create this angle right here that's part of my yellow triangle, right? And if I think to my think back to you know my parallel lines, um, we know we remember that we kind of if we can make that Z like shape, like I'm doing here, right? That was alternate interior angle. So I'm seeing here that I can create this angle and this angle are congruent because of that alternate interior angle that we um, had discussed previously. So I can now make the conclusion that these are in fact um, equal to each other or congruent to each other because of, of the alternate interior angle. So how do we write that? So first off, we're, our statement is going to be that these two specific angles, angle uh, A, B, D, 
is congruent to angle, uh, let's see, C, D, B. So again, A to B to D, and over here it's C, D, B. Again, I could have said B, D, C, that would be the same angle, that would be fine. Right? I could have also named them, um, specifically named those angles and said angle 1 and angle 2. I could have done that myself. Uh, if you wanted to, you could have done angle 1 and angle 2. That would have been acceptable too. I don't have to do both, but just one of those things um, would have been fine. I could not say angle B though, because angle B is uh, being, this point B is actually part of two different angles. It's part of this one up here and this one down here. So angle B is too vague. It's not specific enough to what I'm talking about. So I either have to go with the three letter format or again I could have um, plugged in and actually named them myself with angle one and angle two. Remember if you do that you do have to make sure that you label it in your diagram as I have done here. Alright so more importantly here though how do I write my reason? This one can get a little tricky because again there's a lot of information that went into finding these two things to be alternate interior. I can't just say alternate interior angles because how did we get there, right? We went through a lot there. We said we have parallel lines, we had a transversal, right? And that's how we were able to form these alternate interior angles and said they're congruent. So I don't want to have to sit there and, and label and write out each one of those things. So we can kind of summarize all that together in a sentence here. We can say parallel lines. cut by a transversal form alternate interior angles that are congruent. Right. And as you can see, I utilize the abbreviations and the and the symbols that represent um, you know alternate interior angles. Uh, and congruent, and that's perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, just make sure that you use the appropriate abbreviations or symbols uh, when doing that. Okay. So we got all that information there, um, and we, all that information that we were discussing is all in that sentence. We got our parallel lines. It's been cut by a transversal, and that's how we created the alternate angles that we know are for sure congruent to each other. All right. So again, a little tricky on how to word that. Uh, it's something you got to definitely make sure you practice. Um, and utilize the information that we had talked about previously in, uh, in drawing conclusions. All right. All right, so again, we're looking for side, angle, side. We just proved that we have an angle, All right? That's an angle. So I'm gonna put a little A there off the side just to kind of help me because again, ultimately I'm looking for side, angle, side. We just found the angle. Now we have to find two sides that are next to that angle. So I'm looking at my picture here and I see that AB, this one right here, is one of the sides that makes up angle one, right? And DC is one of the sides that makes up angle two. And in the picture here, we've got the little indication marks that these are in fact congruent to each other. And that's also been told to us in our given information. So we've been told it in actually two different ways, but the important fact is that we have been told that. So now I know that these are in fact congruent because they've been told that they're congruent. So I can now state in my, uh, in my table here that AB is congruent to CD. And again, that was given information. We were specifically told that. So we've got a, a side, we had an angle. So the question now becomes, how do I get the other piece of information, that other side? So Again, looking at my diagram, uh, we have AB is one side. Here's my angle. So the other side of this angle, the one that's next to angle one, that's DB here. That's this one right here in the middle. All right, so I've got DB there. And I'm looking over here at angle two, and again, we've already got DC involved. And I look and say, oh, the other side is also DB, right? So they both of these triangles, this yellow triangle and this green triangle, both share this uh, line segment DB, right? And if you can remember back from our drawing conclusions and some of our definitions, that uh, that both of those uh, being shared by the same thing, that's called the reflexive property, right? And so I'm just going to utilize, uh, and again, trying to check tally marks there. So a lot of times, you know, we utilize a little X there to show that it's equal for both of them. So let's let's write that down. So we got DB is congruent 
to, again, DB or BD, it's the same thing. So basically we're saying that this line segment is congruent to itself, and that is in fact the reflexive property. So we've got an angle, we've got a side, we have another side, and again, that gives me the order. Now, the order that I wrote down here isn't the, the importance. The importance is that this order uh, formats, that the angle is between the two sides. See, I could have kind of like rearranged some of these in different orders, and it would have been okay. Like, I could have started off by saying what I called the third statement could have been my first one, right? That would be fine. I could have said that given first. I just went in the order that they wrote it in the uh, in the question. Um, but it's very plausible that I could have used that one first. So I could have started off with that one. So again, the order that I have them here is not really the um, the importance. It's what I have here, right? What order they have, or I should say in the diagram. So I've got a side here, I've got an angle, and then another side. And then does that match up with the other one? So I've got a side, I've got an angle, and I've got a side. So that's what the order matters in terms of the diagram, in terms of the information that has been applied to this figure. All right. So since those are true, I have the two sides and specifically the angle between those sides. I now can say with certainty that these two triangles, triangle ABD is congruent to triangle CDB. All right. And with that being said, I'll just fix that right there. Uh, we've got right triangle CDB. Uh, the order that I write these does matter, right? So I want to make sure that I write it properly, right? Why was this? This was side angle side criteria. You can either write it like that, or I like to write it symbolically. I usually write it this way: side angle side is congruent to side angle side. I like to write it symbolically, uh, but either one works. Side angle side criteria in words, or or you, or you can write it out uh, symbolically with SAS, congruent to SAS, right? But again, back to this real quick though, uh, the order that I write these does matter. Now, the first triangle I technically could have written in any order, right? Uh, I, I went with ABD because again, the, I know that the corresponding angles have to match up. So in this question, I, I know that A has to match with C, I know that B and D have to match up, and then D has to match up with B. So I know the order already that, uh, that they need to match up. So I'm following same suit so that I know that I've written it properly. Again, I could have rewritten this. I could have said, you know, triangle B, A, D, right? But if I did that, then I would have had to make sure that these letters were written in the same order so that they match up um, accordingly from there. So I, like I said, I utilize the fact that I, I know that they've told me the orders up here. So I just make sure that I, I do the same thing. Right. Let's try another example real quick, right? Um, for this one. So, so number two um, is another example uh, and we're going to do this one using side angle side as well. And the the part that is sometimes real difficult for, for people is these these questions and um, the information given to you can come in so many different ways. Um, so it really can sometimes be difficult because I look at this picture right now and you know, there's not there's nothing written in the picture. I don't really have a lot of information given to me uh, symbolically here. So I, I got to look at other things. I got to you know, my given information here is different than it was in the previous one. So it's really a lot of you know investigating, kind of figuring out you know what information I've been told. What does that tell me, and what can I conclude from there? So let's go through this one here. Um, Let's start off with the first given here. So I've been told that B is in fact a midpoint. So let's write that one down. So number one, uh, B is the midpoint of AD. And again, that was given information. So what did that do for me? Does that tell me uh, uh, two sides are equal? Does it tell me angles are equal? W what does it do for me, right? Uh, so I look here and I say, okay, here's my point B. So that's a midpoint. So what does that tell me? Well, if it's a midpoint, right, we know based on previous knowledge that a midpoint is the center of a line segment, right? It's the exact middle. So that means that AB 
and BD, right, are going to be equal in length because it splits this line segment AD into two equal pieces. So now I can make the, the conclusion that my second statement, I can say that AB is congruent to BD, and my reason would be because this is a midpoint. So I can say that. Now, again, I can't just say a midpoint. I got to give a whole a real reason, a full sentence, a full, uh, you know, uh, mathematical uh, reasoning, a real thought. So uh, basically for this one, it's, it's essentially the definition of what a midpoint is. So um, it, AB is congruent to BD, and our reason is going to be a midpoint divides a line segment into two congruent segments or pieces or parts, whatever you want to say it. All right, so we got one piece of information, that's a side, right? So now we got to find an angle, right? We just found a side, right? So I need an angle and I need another side. So what can I do here? So, uh, so first off, I want to make sure, is there any other information that knowing that B is a midpoint does for me? So tell me anything else. So tell me any other sides are equal or any other angles are equal. And unfortunately, it doesn't. So I've, I've kind of utilized everything I can out of that piece. So let's go to our next uh, given here. So I've been told that AD is perpendicular to BC. All right, well, what does that give me? Again, that was given to me. So what does that tell me? All right, well, if they're perpendicular, if BC intersects AC and they are perpendicular, that means they intersect at right angles. All right, so I now know I have two right angles. All right, so that's very helpful. And all right angles are what to each other? They're congruent because they're all 90 degrees. So now we have... That information has, in fact, given us equal angles. So I got to say that. Now, I can't just say they're equal. I got to first state that uh, this, this angle here, um, again, I can name this as using the three letters, angle A, B, C, and angle uh, what we got? D, B, C. Or, again, I could have utilized angle 1 and angle two, right? But again, if I am going to use that, if I'm going to name it angle one and angle two, I, I have to write it in my diagram, right? So angle one and angle two accordingly. This way, if you just used angle one and angle two and you didn't use the three letter um, version of naming the angle, then whoever's looking or reading um, your proof knows exactly what angles you're talking about. Because if I didn't label it in the diagram, I just said angle one, angle two, I'd have no idea which of these angles because there's a lot of them going on in here. All right, so got to make sure. So angle one and angle two are right angles. All right, and how do we come to that? Well, we can do it because we had perpendicular lines, right? So perpendicular lines form right angles. Again, I'm using the symbols. I'm using the uh, perpendicular line symbol. and the angle symbol, which is fine. Or it could write out in words, not a problem. All right, but again, I've only stated that they're right angles. I actually haven't said that they're equal yet, but we know that all angles are equal. All right angles are equal, so I can now make that claim. So um, I'll stick with the three-letter version here. So angle ABC is congruent to angle DBC, and that would be because all right angles are congruent. All right, so we've thus far said we've got this was a side. We just proved an angle, right? We just proved this one here. So now we need this other side. We need that other side there. So, uh, again, the importance for a side angle side is that the angle is between the sides. So, as we have in our picture here, we've got this side, right? And let's highlight these triangles again just to help us here, right? We got 
this uh, this is our first triangle, right? This is our second triangle, right? So I'm looking at this and I'm saying to myself, okay, here's my angle that's between, right? Here's my angle one and here's my angle two. They way can congruent. And this side and this side are equal. So in order for that to work, I would need this side in the yellow triangle and I would need this side in the blue triangle. And again, coincidentally, they both share that same side again, just like in the previous question. So that means that those are congruent, right? It's the same thing. It's the same exact line segment in both of them. So BC is congruent to itself, right? BC is congruent to CB or again, or BC is congruent to BC, however you want to write it, right? They are congruent to itself and that is the reflexive property. All right, so that allows us to prove a, another side. And again, the, the, the order that we have it here doesn't matter. However, notice though, uh, in, the, in the, the way I've grouped it and I've done it with the colors, like in order for me to say this second statement, I have to have first said this statement, right? This information comes from this first statement. So though the overall order, like I could have said, other like I could have said uh, options um, statement number six I could have really started with that right I didn't really need any other information to get to that so I could have started with the fact that I have that but in order to get to this second statement I needed to first say this first statement so this order mattered same thing with three four and five the order that I wrote these matters I had to have perpendicular lines first then I had to state that they're right angles and then we can say they're congruent I couldn't I couldn't switch those orders but uh, what was written in red, what was written in blue, what was written in green, that could have changed uh, order-wise, right? I could have, you know, started with what's in blue, then done what was in green, and then gone and did what was in red. So the order matters to a degree, but it doesn't matter in the overall sense of it, all right? So now that we have side, angle, side, and we specifically have the two sides, right, with an angle between them, I can now conclude that triangle, again, I would stick with the way they wrote it here. A, B, C is congruent to triangle D, B, C. All right, let's extend that line a little bit. All right, and my reason for that is, again, you can write it out in words, or I like to use the uh, notation version of it. You know, side angle sides congruent to side angle side. All right, and that, and then that's how we've uh, proved with, you know, for with certainty that these two triangles, the yellow and the blue one, are congruent. All right. So utilize this time to you know practice in your notes. Again, the the thing you have to really be careful about when doing these is it really comes down to kind of looking at all the information and inferring what can I conclude based on things that I've been told.